Hi everyone, welcome back to the workshop and it's repair time again. And this time I've got a Keithley 2306 and what this unit's designed to do is to test portable battery operated devices under realistic conditions. This takes place of the battery in your device under test. It's got 100 nanoamp current measurement sensitivity. It's fast, it can detect pulse currents in the range of 33 microseconds upwards. It's got a variable output resistance from zero to one ohm with 10 milliohm resolution. It can measure sleep currents, standby currents, full load currents, and determine power consumption. And of course it can sync current to simulate a discharged battery. So there's a few of these devices in the series. This is the 2306, which is dual channel, and it's got a maximum output voltage of 15 volt at five amp, that's 45 watts. So this particular unit, as I said, is faulty, and I believe it comes up with something on the display, initializing or something like that, and doesn't go any further. So first thing I'm gonna do is open it up, Let's have a look and make sure it's set for 240 volts. Let's have a look inside and make sure it's safe to power it up. Now there's no terminals on the front. Everything is actually round the back. Mains IEC. There's your output terminals there where you can connect your device. It's got GPIB, got relay control uh, output here and a remote display funnily enough and looks like somebody's had it connected in a rack possibly and they've uh, done a manual earth on it. So let's open it up. Well here we are inside the unit. Uh, one big board covered in front to back and you can see the display board at the far end here. There does seem to be a little bit of corrosion round about. The heads of some of the screws that hold the PCB and they're actually quite rusty and if I just tilt it up here these brackets that are holding on these uh, transistors in place are actually quite corroded as well. But anyway no sign of the power supply just yet. I do notice that the rear panel looks to be removable possibly and it looks like I might have to take the board out to actually get to the power supply and I notice there is a screw missing here that holds the board in place. So I just wonder if somebody's been inside this before. Yep, looks like I've got to remove the screws that are holding the board. So I've just taken them out. Let me pull off these headers here. And there we go, that's the main analog board removed anyway, which looks pretty good underside. Top side looks okay, just those clamps that are holding on those transistors against the heatsink here. A little bit of dust, but nothing too bad. And here's the board on the underside of the main board. And you've got the power supply down here, looks to be like a bought-in board. Yeah, a Lambda power supply, you can see the board there. It's been integrated quite well actually, although it doesn't have a cover. And then you've got the two main uh, channels here, by the looks of it. And yes, those clamps there, they're just totally corroded. And over in the corner here, looks like we've got the main processor, IEC filter and GPIB control down there as well. And of course you've got a fan on the back, and some protection over here and uh, looks like we've got 5 volt LM2940 down in the corner there. I think the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to blow it out. There's quite a lot of dust in here and so I'll just go and get the compressor up and running and blow it out. Oh, have we got a missing screw down here as well I wonder? Yeah, looks like somebody's had this apart before. That's a little bit concerning. Well, it looks like the power supply is an auto switcher, so no worries there about selecting it for the correct line voltage, but I'm actually going to remove it just due to the corrosion on the heads of all of those screws and the one missing on the power supply. I'm actually just going to pull it and I just have a quick look at the underside. What I will do is I will be removing 
all of the screws and buffing them up because they just are quite heavily corroded. I think this must have been used in a high humidity environment possibly. There we go, I think that's it ready to pull out. Can't see any other screws. Just get the headers off. Wow, tight. Looks like it's just got a single output, this power supply. And there we go, that's the power supply removed. And actually, no worries, it's got a nice conformal coating on the underside and no signs of any problems and the main unit is pretty clean underneath as well so I think I'll refit the power supply and whilst I'm at it I'll buff up the screws that are holding in see if we're doing it later on so whilst I was in the vicinity I thought I'd take a look at the processor section down here where you've got the ROM, you've got RAM and you've got the actual processor itself now one of the common problems with these units is the display freezes on boot, exactly what this unit's got. And it's down to, apparently, a RAM fault. So just replacing the RAM seems to fix that problem. So hopefully that's all we've got to do with this unit. However, look at this here. Somebody has replaced this RAM previously. It's not straight on its pads and there's some markings on the side of the ROM socket there uh, so it looks like somebody's been in here with a soldering iron perhaps but more worrying than that is looks like we've got a delamination of the circuit board here if you can see that lighter coloured green there that's actually delamination within the layers of the PCB now luckily on the top side anyway it doesn't seem to have broken any tracks or anything like that but what it's done internally, who knows? So for the moment anyway, I'll just refit the analog board and then I'll come back. Okay, ready for the power up. Got fan. Initializing on the display there. Quite faint actually. Exactly as the ad had it. And it just continues to see initialising. I'll take the board out again. I suspect that the initialising message on the display is coming from the processor on the back of the display. And from that point, so it's booting up okay. And from that point onwards, it's now waiting for comms from the main digital board, which I suspect is not happening because of that RAM problem. So I think the first thing I'm going to do is get take this board out again, remove that RAM from the PCB and take a look on the underside of it. And if all looks okay, I'll fit a new RAM and try again. Okay, let's desolder that RAM. And there's a good look at that delamination. And actually, it's still bubbled up because I can press it down. And it looks to me like it's just the top layer that's uh, delaminated. It's not anything further down. So what causes delamination? Well, there is a failure mode where moisture within the layers of the PCB can eventually cause the surface to bubble up. However, in this case, I think it's overheating. The previous unit are trying to remove that SRAM and it's just bubbled it up. So I've decided I'm actually going to make an attempt to try to fix this delamination. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to take a drill bit and I'm going to dr just hand drill a small hole over here. And then I'm going to inject epoxy, hopefully as much as I can, into that cavity. I'm quite happy that that is the top layer only that's delaminated. And uh, I'm not going to interrupt any internal layers but <laughs> fortune favours the brave so let's give it a bash
yes that went through rather easily there into that top layer there as you can see so now I'm going to mix up some epoxy hopefully that hole's big enough I can easily make it a bit wider if necessary and I'll inject some epoxy now just before injecting the epoxy I did lightly heat the delaminated section just to try and burn off any moisture through the hole I've made and it did make the bubble rise which was a bit disconcerting. Seems to be working. I'm using a syringe with a bent needle just to squeeze the epoxy in there. How far I can get it under I should have maybe drilled a vent hole at the other side so far so good it's keeping the pressure on it and it does seem to be spreading this is 15 minute epoxy so I'm not that long <laughs> Let's take it out and see what we've got now. Let's clean off the PCB. By squeezing it down as well, it might force the epoxy just to move around as well. Well, there we go three injection points one there one there and one over here and I think I've covered as much as I can the section underneath the IC was a little bit harder to inject into because I couldn't really get the hole big enough I didn't really want to risk the tracks that were possibly underneath there so I've just managed to inject it and I should manage to cover an area about that size there enough to keep that part anyway pretty well flat now looking at a photograph of the circuit board you can clearly see here what the delamination looked like beforehand what I've also gone ahead and done is I verified the connections between various vias that may have been impacted through the delamination i.e. could have been broken in some internal layers and it looks like the ones around about it anyway seem to be pretty much intact so I'm hoping my repair is good enough for going forward and I think for the future maybe if I have to revisit something like this again I think I'd actually like some more uh, runny epoxy it's kind of thick and I think that's part of the problem it's really hard to inject it it's kind of got too much stiction and yeah I think um, if I can get my hands on something that's a bit less viscous so that it's able to move around underneath there that would probably be better okay so the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to try and clean up all the corrosion on all these screws and brackets as you can see here I've already removed one and I'm going to do it in the ultrasonic cleaner well unfortunately the bracket didn't come out as good as I thought it might in the ultrasonic cleaner and nor did the screw actually the head didn't come up as good as the other ones that I put in so it looks like I'm just going to go ahead and replace the screws and I'm just going to rub down these brackets and uh, clean them up a bit so I'll go away and do that to all the brackets and screws there's quite a lot of them and then I'll come back and hopefully by that time the SRAM IC will have come back for this board here okay so I've got a compatible RAM chip so let me go away and solder it into place and then we'll power it up and see what happens okay we're about ready for a power up now I have cleaned up all the brackets replaced all the screws and I've had to assemble both the boards into the actual chassis just to get all the cables etc all connected up so that I can try a power up and I've got the front panel sitting loose at the moment so we're ready for a power up got the power hooked in and main switch is off let me just switch it on externally now I haven't powered up yet so 
let me just zoom in on the display and hopefully we can see something so let's try it put the fan on and yes yes it's yes it's working I hope you can see that let me just turn one of my lights off it is actually working so it's gone past the initializing message that was coming up before looks like it's working the display is rather dim but i do know you can adjust that from the front panel so whether it's at its brightness at the moment i don't know but i can get a new vfd if i need to well there you go i've just checked the brightness level and it's at its maximum so it looks like i am going to have to replace that vfd i know of a couple of second hand ones but unknown brightness levels or age etc but luckily actually farnell are selling these vfds brand new at a reasonable price given the value of the actual instrument so i think i'm going to go ahead and replace it but i'll do that later on so there we go i think i'm going to call this a part one video i might come back with a part two if i replace the vfd and also if i manage to set this thing up with some batteries etc and try and work out how to use it because i don't know anything about it apart from its general functionality so thanks for watching and don't forget to like and subscribe it really does help the channel grow and if you want to help me more directly then you can always donate via paypal or patreon in the links below there's plenty more videos on my channel check them out and thanks for watching